Seven minutes to nine. Cambridge University is about to get a new professor, professor of innovation, and that's thanks to a man who's done a fair bit of innovating himself, one of our most successful inventors. In fact, he's Dr John C. Taylor, and he's a man who gave us the electric kettle, or rather, more importantly, a safe electric kettle, and he shelled out two and a half million pounds to pay the new professor for the first five years. Good morning to you. Good morning. And I know you've had loads of inventions, but you will, you will, will inevitably you'll be remembered for the electric kettle. Was that just a sort of inspiration, or have you been working on it for years? It's one of these things that it's not just one invention. It's a whole series of little inventions mm. which all add up to the, to the, the total in the end. And the important thing about it, part of the fact that everybody uses electric kettles now safely, is that you made money out of it. Y yes, I... I one has to make a living, but uh, people don't really understand that uh, price is fixed by the market and uh, the market stood what it stood and the company was successful. And, and, and if that were not the case, and I raise the question of you making money, not, not because you're a greedy man or something, but because without that, without cash generation, you don't get future inventions i mean you have to have you have to have somebody to turn that invention into reality and that takes money uh, not necessarily money but it also it certainly takes brain power and that's why um, i think this change from an invention into a practical reality uh, needs somebody to champion uh, this process and that's why I've endowed the uh, professorship of innovation. Right and, and, and you're 80 and you think a lot of other 80 year olds should be doing the same I mean, if they've got the money they should use it for this sort of thing. Yes it's fun, um, it's good to see um, reinvestment of what you've made into the communities. But tell me this are, are inventors born or made? I mean most of us wouldn't even think of sitting down at the, the tender age and tinkering with a bit of, uh, I don't know, electrics or whatever and trying to turn it into something. Some people do. It, it must be something you're born with, isn't it? To a certain extent, yes. I was lucky my father was an inventor. Ah. Uh, but by the age of 10, I was making my own inventions. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> really? What sort of things were you doing at 10 then? Oh, making a, um, a machine which would go on the string of a kite and release a little glider and so that uh, the wind blew the uh, the pair up to the top oh. and it released the glider and then it slid back down so you could do it again. And did it work? Oh definitely yes it was a small boy exercising machine because you <laughs> ran to <laughs> collect the glider and take it back and do it again. But presumably that didn't make you millions did it? <laughs> no <laughs> but I made one or two for, for some friends. <laughs> what, what are the, the big things this is a silly question in a way I know because there's a million of them but the next kind of big invention that if, if you were a youngster now and you were looking at, at, at the whole world of invention what would you want to be doing well that's a very difficult one yeah uh, there's, there's two sides of invention um, there's uh, fairly mundane things like a kettle and you can make a very good living out of it Whereas uh, electronics, microelectronics, how you make uh, 50 gigabytes on a, on a uh, head of a pin, um, that requires huge investment and uh, the equipment and the team. Whereas you can have a lot of fun as a sole inventor um, making the world a better place. Yeah, but I was going to say you're doing yourself down a bit, aren't you? Because if you don't have that inspiration, in the first place. It doesn't matter how many billions you've got tinkering around with, with you know, heads of pins and things. Um, it's not going to happen, is it? There has to be that Absolutely initial... Absolutely right, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, you, you, you've got to want to change the world. An inventor is an unreasonable man. Everybody knows <laughs> that you can't change the world and your object as an inventor is to change the world. So, by definition, you're an unreasonable man. And you're an unreasonable man, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you... I want to change the world still. <laughs> well, well, you, you, you've taken a few big steps towards it, Dr. John C. Taylor. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you very much.